How's it going everyone? Foxy here and today for you I have Dynasty Warriors 6. I have a lot of memories with this game. It was the reason I even decided to get a next gen console at the time, that being the PS3. I believe and I may be wrong but I think it was my first game as well. Not that this is exclusive to PS3 or anything, it's available on the 360 which is the system I'm playing on. It also came out for the PS2, and I'll get to that later. There's quite a bit to discuss about that version of the game. And back then, I was a gigantic fan of Dynasty Warriors, maybe even a fanboy, I guess. And I remember seeing a commercial for this game where they advertised unlimited combos and just all this new shit, and I was just so fucking excited. I think I got the game and the PS3 at Christmas time. Uh, Might have been my birthday a month later, but. I know it's somewhere around that time, either way, whatever. Okay, so the story in Dynasty Warriors is pretty complex. It would take me quite a long time to fully explain what exactly is going on. But to sum it up, there's three kingdoms that are trying to unite China for their own reasonings, and they all turn to war and eventually one of them does succeed in unifying the land. And that's the gist of it, but if you care to learn more about the story then by all means look it up online or whatever. It is pretty interesting. So in Dynasty Warriors 6, you can select 17 characters to play story mode with, and needless to say, each of them has their own separate storyline. And this to me was kind of mind-boggling, because in previous games you could play the story mode with any character you wanted. So just think about this. Dynasty Warriors 5 had, I don't know, I'm just going to play it safe here and say 40 characters you can play as, and all of them are giving a story mode. So then you go to 6 and find out that not even half of them are given a story mode? Yeah, that confuses me and actually pisses me off because I don't think they gave a reason as to why they did that. Also, the story mode per character, I would say takes you around anywhere from an hour to two. So times that by the 17 guys they give you and that's roughly how long the story mode is going to last you. Now the graphics, while of course look much better than how they did on the previous games on the PS2 and Xbox, they're really nothing worth creaming your coffee over. They just look okay. Not great, not awful, just okay, even for when the time the game came out. Although the opening cutscene does look pretty beautiful, so I guess I'll give them that. They also decided to change the look of the character models. They made everything look fresh and new, and I'm pretty happy for the most part in how everyone looks overall. However, I don't really think they needed to make Zheng He look so much more like a raging homosexual. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. I mean, it's fine if that's who you are. Absolutely. I mean, I have many gay friends. My father's gay. When it comes to the levels, the graphics are alright. It does sometimes look a little plain every now and then, but what can you really expect? It's a battlefield, it's not really meant to look pretty. One thing I did notice is that both enemies and allies sometimes just disappear and reappear on screen. I don't know if there's just too much shit on screen or something, but... There was one instance where I was running into a large enemy army, and then when I actually got into, like, attacking distance, half of them just kind of disappeared. I don't know. It was really weird. I have noticed one specific thing that has seemed to improve uh, when it comes to the graphics. In previous games, if there was a shit ton of enemies on screen, the game will go into a slow-mo and the frames will drop and everything's choppy. But in this game, it does still happen, it's just a lot less frequent. And I wonder if this has anything to do with the disappearing AI. The sound is alright for the most part. The music in Dynasty Warriors has always been a pretty big positive for me, and this one is no exception. I really, really love the music. The one reoccurring issue with all Dynasty Warrior games, even with the ones that come after 6, is the acting. It's never been good. It's slowly improved over each installment, yes, but not to where I could ever possibly consider the acting as good. Some actors are better than others, but as a whole, it's always kind of been shitty. But it's not ungodly bad or anything, it's tolerable, but still, it's not that good.
Master Sun Tse, we have come here to help you. You traitor, Yuan Shu. You will pay! I, Liu Bei, descendant of Liu Shang, King of Zhongshan, will end your infamy! So let's change focus here to the gameplay. You know, disappointing would be the nicest way of putting it. The combat system they call the Renbu system was like meant to be this big new thing, having unlimited endless combos. Problem is, yeah, it has the unlimited combos if you feel like just pressing one button the entire time. In previous games, the combo system combined both square and triangle, or whatever the Xbox equivalent is, sort of like a light attack with a heavy attack. In this game, you can't combine both moves. It's either the light or the heavy attack. You can upgrade your Renbu level, but all that does is extend the number of moves your light and heavy attacks have overall. You can't chain them together like you could in previous games. The combat system is like, seriously, the most boring, monotonous, repetitive, thoughtless bullshit I think I've ever seen in a hack and slash game before. I don't know what went through their fucking minds when they thought this through. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? You know what? No. I'm wrong. The Renbu thing is a good idea. However, it was just so poorly just the minimalist amount of effort went into this. If they had it so that you can chain both attacks together in a sort of seamless way. Best examples I can come up with are God of War, Heavenly Sword, maybe even Ninja Gaiden. Then this wouldn't have been a problem. The Renbu thing was so bad that in the next installment, which wasn't even Dynasty Warriors 7, it was fucking Dynasty Warriors 6 Empires, which is, I guess, a sub-series, whatever. Either way, they went back to the old fighting system. What does that tell you? And you know what else is infuriating? Remember how I said there's only 17 people you can use for story mode? Well, get this. The rest of the 30, however the fuck many people you can play as, depending on their weapon, all use the same exact moveset. Oh, but it gets more annoying. Koei, who develops and or publishes whatever, the Dynasty Warriors series, released the same game, Dynasty Warriors 6 for the PS2. And that version, they added more people to play the story mode with, more levels, and made unique movesets for six more characters. Granted, they did have to get rid of some features, but that right there is still Bed Bath & Beyond bullshit. And I'm sorry for ranting about this so long, but it's just so fucking frustrating. Other than your light and heavy attacks, you can do a couple more things, like two different grapple moves. You also have a thing called a Musou attack. It's basically a chain of moves that are more powerful and you are not able to get hurt during said move. Very useful if you are in danger of dying or just want to destroy a number of enemies at once. Another thing that you have is a sort of special attack. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but you press the left trigger and it activates a certain power. And what these do depend on the person you're playing as. Some people have volley, which when activated, arrows will rain down from the sky all around you for like 10 or so seconds. True speed makes you run super fast and your attacks while running are different and usually more powerful. And there's a couple others. These are kind of cool. True speed seems to be my favorite out of the bunch because of just how useful it is. The level designs and layouts I'm pretty happy with. Blown away, not at all, but some of the levels, for example, Mount Ding Jun, Guan Du, and Fan Castle, I really, really enjoyed in pretty much every way. I do still think that previous games had much better designed levels, but I can't really complain. But what I will complain about is that it seems like there's quite a lot of dark levels. I tend to try to avoid playing these because I don't know about you, but I don't have a good time seeing shit in the dark, so I'm constantly just running into walls, trees, and other objects. And I can't say that I remember having this problem on any other installment, 
but I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong about that. You also in each level get a set of tasks that if you complete them, you get bonus XP and I think in some or most cases weapons as well. These tasks are usually things like take X amount of bases within 10 minutes, defend a specific ally, or kill a specific enemy. Those seem to show up the most, but there are some more interesting ones that end up giving you a much higher XP bonus. Also, while I'm on the subject of XP, they did something different with the level up system. Each time you do level up, you are given a point, and you have this skill tree where you can set points on. I really love this system, and I'm pretty disappointed that later games didn't utilize this skill tree idea. Well, you know, Dynasty Warrior 7 kinda did, but it was far worse and to be honest, just flat out fucking stupid and worthless. So with that said, let's finish up here with the final thoughts. You know, I honestly don't know what else to say. I feel as if the game is just incomplete, as if they just wanted to rush out their game as fast as possible to the next-gen consoles at the time. There's just so much in the game that feels like they just threw their hands up in the air and went fuck it. For example, the extremely monotonous combat system, the characters having the same movesets, and the whole story mode thing. I don't know, it's it's kind of sad really, because me being at the time a gigantic fan of the series and just playing this, getting so beyond disappointed, just ruined how much of a fan I am now of the series altogether, if that makes sense. Even with the games that came out after this one, I was and still am very hesitant to even rent them from the library, for free mind you, because I'm afraid of getting more disappointed to where... I just completely give up with the series altogether.